Hello everyone, welcome to the Evangelist Nick Garrett channel. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. First, here are a few videos that may interest you in preparing to watch today's video. There are links in the video description. Immediately following the death of Jesus Christ, the apostles began spreading the message around the Mediterranean world. By the second century AD, there were dozens of writings written by dozens of writers discussing and explaining the meaning and movements of Christianity. The first rounds of writers were the Apostolic Fathers, the direct descendants of the apostles and their disciples. In time, the Church Fathers held the oral and written traditions, but without links to the actual men and women who walked with Jesus. Much like today's social media comment sections, exchanging opinions and ideas, back then they took quill to parchment and exchanged their ideas about the Christian faith. Through periods of persecution, acts of religious tolerance, and the rise of great Roman rulers, these so-called Antonicene Fathers, and the Church gave us more history than the writers of the books of the Bible in many cases. Antonicene refers to the writers and beliefs about the Church prior to the First Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. Several sources exist from that time period. We have the Didache, also known as the Teachings of the Twelve Apostles. We also have the Liber Pontificalis, a later document that points to the earliest Roman bishops. No doubt most of it was arranged after Nicaea. We have the very reliable volumes of the Antonicene Fathers. There seems to be this strange view in our modern secular world that the Bible says some outlandish things that can't be substantiated, and then there's nothing else until modern times. Evidence stops. Accounts of events stop. Archaeology stops. But nothing could be further from the truth. The documentation of Christianity is near constant in every century. With the writings of the early church fathers alone, most of the New Testament could be completely reconstructed. We know Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, and the writers of the New Testament, but what of the next generation? Who were these Antonicene fathers, and when were they? This video does not answer a great secret mystery, it just introduces us to the earliest players during the movement of the early church, during the first, second, and third centuries. It should be noted that in our age of secularism, there is an attempt to say Christ never existed or was really just a teacher. But what are we then to make of the overwhelming primary historical evidence talking about him? In large part, Jesus benefited from the merging of cultures of the Middle East after the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD and the rise of Christian students in other cities around the Mediterranean. Today we are simply looking at the main Antonicene Fathers, who they were, when they lived, and what they wrote. First we have Alexander of Alexandria. He died in 328 AD and he was Bishop of the Church at Alexandria, Egypt. When the Arian controversy broke out, he was strongly opposed to it as a heresy. We have Apollinarius a second century bishop of Hierapolis and Christian apologist. He also wrote a short work against the Montanists. Archelaus was a third century Christian bishop who publicly debated Manes, the founder of Manichaeism. A record of this debate is chronicled in the disputation of Archelaus and Manes. We have Aristides, an early 2nd century converted Greek philosopher from Athens who wrote one of the earliest Christian apologies. Aristo of Pella from the 2nd century. He was an early Christian apologist about whom little is known, only brief excerpts remain from his apology. Arius, 
from 250 to 336 AD. He was presbyter in the church in Alexandria who disputed with his bishop over the nature of Christ. Arius taught that Jesus was of a different nature than the Father and that he was created out of nothing. His views were condemned at the Council of Nicaea. So Alexander of Alexandria, Arius, Council of Nicaea, it ends up being kind of the main theme there. Arnobius, uh, he died around 330 AD and he was a noted pagan teacher of rhetoric at Sissa in North Africa. He converted to Christianity. According to Jerome, the local bishop demanded proof of his sincerity before admitting him into the church. That was because Arnobius had previously been an outspoken opponent of Christianity. So Arnobius wrote a letter, an apology, a work entitled Against the Pagan, which is included in the Antonicene Fathers. Although orthodox in intent, the work reflects the fact that um, he did not have a thorough grasp in totality of Christian doctrine. Athenaragus, a second century Christian apologist. He had been a Greek philosopher before his conversion. His apology was presented to the emperor Marcus Aurelius and Commodius in about 177 AD. Bardasanes lived from about 154 AD to 222. He was a Syriac converted to Christianity. He later lapsed into heresy, espousing many Gnostic tenets. His work, The Book of the Laws of the Diverse Countries, may have actually been written by a student, Philip. However, in the volumes of the Antonicene Fathers, it's credited to him. Uh, it's been included in most dictionaries only sparingly, where it contains historical information or else theological teachings that are consistent with pre-Nicene orthodoxy. The Epistle of Barnabas, from about 70 to 100 AD. It's an anonymous work, but it was widely circulated among early Christians. Many early Christians believe that work to have been written by Barnabas, the well-known companion of the Apostle Paul. Uh, some writers, such as Clement of Alexandria, even considered it to be scripture. It was included in the early scripture, uh, the manuscript Codex Synacticus, which contains much of the modern New Testament. Most modern scholars doubt it was actually written by the historic Barnabas. Caius, early third century, presbyter in the church at Rome, who wrote several works against major heresies of his day, also known as Gaius. We also have Celsus, a second century pagan Roman philosopher who wrote a blistering attack on Christianity. Over half a century later, his attack was brilliantly answered by Origen. We have Clement of Rome from the first century. He was bishop of the church at Rome. He may well have been a companion of both Peter and Paul. On behalf of the church in Rome, he wrote a letter to the Corinthian church in aid to the church leaders who had been ousted by minority factions. The work designated the second Clement was at one time erroneously attributed to Clement of Rome. However, uh, it's actually an early sermon or homily, the authorship of which is unknown. We also have a Clement of Alexandria, uh, 150 to 215 AD. Learned Christian teacher at Alexandria, Egypt, who was in charge of the catechal school there. Origen was one of his pupils in the largest extant work he did, Miscellanies. Clement attempted unsuccessfully to wrest the term Gnostic uh, away from the heretics and give it to a Christian meaning to avoid confusion. Cyprian, who died in 258 AD, was bishop of the church in Carthage in North Africa during a period of fierce persecution. He often had uh, to work underground. However, he was eventually captured and executed by the Romans. An extensive collection of letters written to and from Cyprian still remain, along with various treatises written by him. Those works give tremendous insight into the structure of the church in the middle of the third century. Dionysius of Alexandria died in 264 AD. He was a pupil of Origen, later head of the catechal school in Alexandria, 
and eventually Bishop of Alexandria. He wrote against Sabellianism, and he opposed Paul of Samosota. Dionysius of Corinth, 2nd century. He was Bishop of Corinth, um, same uh, of those letters written by him. Dionysius of Rome, 268 AD is when he died. He was Bishop of Rome and entered into a controversy with Dionysius, the Bishop of Alexandria, concerning the divine nature of Christ. So here we are in the 260s already seeing this argument come up that would come up in the Council of Nicaea in 325. Uh, Briefly, not a person, but an important event, the Edict of Milan was signed in 313 AD. This decree issued jointly by Constantine and Licinius, rulers of the Western and Eastern Roman portions of the secular Roman Empire, gave legal recognition to Christianity for the first time through a religious toleration act. Uh, We have Eusebius uh, from 270 to 340 BC. He was bishop of the church in Caesarea during the time of Constantine's reign. His ecclesiastical history is a principal source for the history of the church from the first century down through the time of the emperor Constantine. It is in fact a quite valuable source. Vermilion, 200 to 268 AD, he was Bishop of Caesarea and Cappadocia. He was a friend of origin, and he sided with Cyprian against Stephen, Bishop of Rome, in the controversy concerning baptism by heretics. Hegisippus, 110 to 180 AD, an early guy, an early church historian. Only fragments of his work are still extant preserved by Eusebius's ecclesiastical history. Hegesippus drew up one of the earliest lists of succession of bishops in the church in Rome. Hermas, first or second century, author of an allegorical work entitled The Shepherd, which was widely read and held in great esteem by many early Christian churches, Origen believed the author to be the same person referred to by Paul in Romans 16.14. The Muratorian fragment asserts that he was the brother of Pius, second century bishop of Rome. See Hermas or Shepherd of Hermas. Hippolytus, 170 to 236, a leading presbyter in the church in Rome near the beginning of the third century, the 200, he attacked the theology and discipline of two Roman bishops, Zephyrinus and Callistus, and apparently led to schism on the Roman church for a while. His principal work was the refutation of all heresies. Among other works, he also wrote commentaries on Daniel and the Song of Songs. He ended up dying as a martyr. Uh, Ignatius, 35 to 107 AD, bishop of the church at Antioch and a personal disciple of one or more apostles. He was executed in Rome in 107. On his way to Rome as a prisoner, Ignatius wrote letters to several churches. These letters give considerable insight into the structure and belief of the churches in Asia Minor at the close of the apostolic period. Irenaeus, 130 to 200 AD, Bishop of the Church at Lyon in modern day France. When he was a boy, Irenaeus had heard Polycarp teach. From this, it is generally supposed that Irenaeus was a native of Smyrna. In 190, Irenaeus wrote to Victor, Bishop of Rome, pleading tolerance for the Christians in Asia Minor who celebrated Easter on a different day than they did in Rome. He is classified as both Eastern and Western, since he was from an Eastern background but ministered in the West. Julius Africanus, uh, 160 to 240 AD, he was a Roman military officer, friend of the king and emperor, convert to Christianity. Only a few letters of his writing exist. We have Justin Martyr from 100 to 165 AD. He was a philosopher who converted to Christianity and became a tireless evangelist and apologist. He wrote more concerning Christianity than any other person prior to this time. He's classified as Eastern since he was a native of Samaria, 
and his thought patterns were Eastern. However, he spent the last years of his life in Rome, where he was executed as a martyr. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Martyr is as good a place to stop as any. We'll do a part two to finish out this list of Antonicene fathers. In the comments section, tell me if you're surprised to learn that there were so many people writing about Christianity and scripture so soon after the death of Christ. Like me, did you have that misconception that there were long periods of history before anybody wrote anything? But my gosh, here we have Loctite evidence that this topic was being discussed almost the second it happened. Check out the videos in the video description because they'll add to the story we're telling today. And I look forward to seeing you on part two, which I'll hopefully get out in the next day or so, that has the rest of the names of the list of the Antonicene Fathers. Thank you so much for your support over the years, and I look forward to talking to you next time.